Generally, I like coming to work these days because uh, I, I love my job. I like this job because I'm allowed to be sarcastic at work, you know, which I'm sure many of you do, but I'm contractually obligated to be <laughs> sarcastic at work. I used to do it in my old job. I remember I was like, oh, well done, Toby. That's a brilliant spaceship, you dick. <laughs> That is how I lost my job in the primary school, really. But, uh, <laughs> it's weird. Sarcasm is very popular, isn't it, in this country? We go mental for it. We love sarcasm. We're, sometimes I think it's too popular. Sometimes I think it creeps into situations where it doesn't really belong. Like, I'll give you an example. Recently, I was at the dentist, and they had a poster in the waiting room, and it said, Question, do I have to floss between all of my teeth? Answer, no, just the ones you want to keep. <laughs> I don't think sarcasm is appropriate <laughs> in a medical context, really. I mean, where do you draw the line with that? What if you're at the doctor's, at the GP in the waiting room and there's a, a poster on the wall and it says, question, can I eat all the pies? <laughs> Answer, yeah, you carry on, you thick, fat prat. <laughs> That would be quite an aggressive campaign, wouldn't it? <laughs> Although what's tragic is you wouldn't reel back in shock if you saw it in this country. You'd be like, oh, right, well, I'll lay off the parties then. <laughs> I've maxed out all my credit cards. I love the adverts on the radio for credit cards when the woman's really excited and she's like, get this credit card because it's brilliant and there's zero interest for nine long months and you can buy loads of stuff and you can go into absolute denial about debt and it might even make you come. And then, <laughs> right at the end, she goes, subject to availability, non fixed rate, variable APR, terms and conditions apply. Like, what did you just say then? <laughs> That's not a reasonable way of communicating, is it? That's, you wouldn't tolerate being spoken to in that manner in any other situation in your life. You wouldn't put up with it. You wouldn't put up with it if, for example, you were out on a date and you thought to yourself, this bloke's attractive. And he says to you, I think you're attractive, and I am solvent. <laughs> and I've got absolutely no emotional baggage. But I will be intending to take you up the arse, not returning phone calls and erode your self-confidence. <laughs> no, sorry, I didn't catch everything you said then. You, you gabbled a bit then at the end. Don't worry, darling. Don't worry, sweetheart. Do you want another little glass of wine? Something like that? Do hope you're going for a tip when I'll be recording it for training purposes. <laughs> that would be quite unsettling, wouldn't it? You know, initially. <laughs> Push through. <laughs> the other quite nice thing about this job is not only am I allowed to be sarcastic, I'm allowed to exaggerate. All comedians exaggerate. It's quite a comedic conceit to use exaggeration. And women are very good at exaggerating. Generally speaking, we're a lot better than men at it, I think, apart from the <laughs> cock stuff. We're much, better, <laughs> we're much better at exaggerating than men. Women are very good at just slightly overreacting to arguably trivial things. <laughs> We've got that covered. Like, you know when a woman puts her hand in her handbag to find her purse, but she doesn't immediately find her purse? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being funny. I'm going to have to cancel all of my cards now and everything. Oh, hang on, I found it. I found it. I hadn't checked the front pocket. What am I like? You're like a prick. 